Hello and welcome to Quick Terrain Modeler's tutorial on 2D imagery. In this video, we'll show you how to work more efficiently with 2D imagery, better known as textures, in Quick Terrain Modeler. We'll also show you how to work with different texture sources, both file and web based, how and why to resample textures, and lastly, how to export textures. The way Quick Terrain Modeler handles textures relies heavily on your graphics card. You want to ensure that you're using Quick Terrain Modeler and your computer to their fullest extent by verifying that Quick Terrain Modeler is using the correct settings for your installed graphics card. Do this by opening Quick Terrain Modeler, going to the Help menu, and Open GL Resources. In the Open GL Driver info, you should see your primary graphics card. If not, you need to adjust this on your graphics card control panel, usually found by right clicking on your desktop. Sources of textures, both imagery and maps, can be stored locally as a file-based source on a shared or local drive or even a network-attached storage device, or secondly, on a web mapping server, usually over the internet or on closed networks with web mapping servers installed. Quick Terrain Modeler recognizes many types of textures and treats each one slightly different. Regardless of its source, textures fall into two general categories, geo-registered or unregistered. Textures from WMS sources are geo-registered. File-based textures can be either and fall into several subcategories. Orthorectified textures are generally flat images viewed straight down and are the most common and do not require additional steps when loading. Orthographic and projective, which are viewed oblique or off nadir, i.e. not straight down, require additional steps when loading. Unregistered textures can be utilized in Quick Terrain Modeler, however, they must be geo-registered using Quick Terrain Modeler's image registration tool before loading. You can see the help files under Textures menu, Overlay Unregistered Textures for more information. If you know the file location, you can use the Import Texture button to open the Load Texture window. Simply navigate to the file location, select the files you wish to load, and select Open. If you do not know the file location, but you know where on earth you want to search, the Model Search tool will search selected directories or caches for all compatible textures when you select 2D raster data in the Execute Search portion of the Search Window tool. Users with an internet connection can access global coverage of maps and imagery by connecting to a web mapping service. Web mapping service imagery is treated as a normal texture once loaded and will appear in the layer tree textures folder using the prefix of the WMS server name. As the WMS imagery is loading, users can continue to work in the 3D scene and the texture will continue to sharpen until it's fully loaded. Web mapping services require an XML file describing the service to work with Qt Modeler. These XML files are frequently found on the source website, and a few samples of the XML files can be found in the Qt Modeler installation folder in the WMS subfolder. There may be times when the texture you want to load exceeds the capability of your graphics card. This is increasingly common as today's imagery can be very high resolution. In instances when the texture exceeds your graphic card's capability, Quick Terrain Modeler will downsample the image to fit into a texture slot. To see if a texture has been downsampled upon loading, simply left click on the texture name in the layer tree. If the sampling X or Y values are greater than 1, it means the image has been downsampled to fit into an available texture slot. If this is the case, the image could be sharpened by resampling the image, but the sharpened image would need to be geographically smaller. Simply zoom in to an area of interest prior to resampling texture. During the resample process, Quick Terrain Modeler will go back to the original image file, carve out the smaller portion of the image, and add it to the scene at the highest resolution possible. The original texture will still be present in the scene, but the smaller chip will be on top of the larger, lower resolution texture. You will see the resampled texture in the Textures folder just below the original texture, appended with a similar name or view number. Textures, once loaded into Quick Terrain Modeler, can be exported in various formats. To see which options are available for a specific texture, right-click on the texture name in the layer tree or visit the Export menu to see other possibilities. The export possibilities fall into two categories, geo-registered and unregistered, or screen grabs. Export of the imagery that is geo-registered is the most useful and most popular export type. This includes export to GeoTIFF, KMZs, Garmin, APAS, and ATAC, with GeoTIFF being by far the most commonly used and universally understood format. Various types of KMZ files go out to Google Earth and other apps that read KMZ files. Export of imagery that is not geo-registered can be used as briefing tools such as the export to PowerPoint option. Exporting images that represent a specific viewpoint or off nadir in the 3D scene, such as an observer's viewpoint from a key location or a pilot's approach to landing view on a specific landing angle, are most common. 
These files can be a PowerPoint, JPEG, PNG, and BMP or other file formats. Draping a 2D image or texture on top of a 3D model can instantly create a very realistic scene. It can dramatically increase situation awareness and deliver an intuitive understanding of terrain and other features while all of Quick Terrain Modeler's visualization, navigation, analysis, and export tools are still available to the user. We hope that this tutorial has helped clarify the various methods for finding, loading, working with, and exporting 2D imagery. For further help, please visit our website or don't hesitate to contact us. We'd love to hear from you.